uh, session will be interesting for you. Um, as I mentioned before we start, um, today I will cover only the fundamental things about Lucene and how we can use it with our Spring Boot application. There is a lot more that we can discuss. If you want, to, we, you can ping me anytime after that. Uh, today, we're going to see what actually Lucene is uh, to cover the core components of Lucene, um, to compare the Lucene itself with uh, some uh, commonly used and uh, a very powerful technologies like Sour and uh, Sour and Elasticsearch. And after that, I will show you how uh, using Hibernate Search, which is wrapping uh, Lucene to integrate it in our Spring Boot applications. And during the session, uh, I have prepared a demo and I will be switching between the presentation and my code. So let's start uh, with what is Lucene. Lucene is a Java-based search library that provides powerful full text indexing and searching capabilities. Uh, as I mentioned, firstly, it was written in Java, but in our days, uh, it's implemented and in you in and use in many other languages. Sorry, uh, it offers fine grained control over indexing and searching processes. Uh, Lucene is sorry, Lucene is uh, widely used as a standalone library or as a foundation for building search functionalities in custom applications. Um, it's used by uh, LinkedIn, Jira, Twitter, Apple, and many more. In the Power by Link, uh, you can check how many companies and projects are using it. Um, Lucene is highly scalable and performs very well with large volumes of data. Uh, and it provides automatic uh, index synchronization. The core components of Lucene uh, are six, at least what we are going to cover. The first one is the index itself. Lucene is using inverted indexing, which means that instead of mapping pages to keywords, it maps keywords to pages, which provides a faster search responses. Uh, each index, as you can see on the image, is built of uh, several from one or uh, multiple documents. Um, the documents itself is a collection of fields and each field has a value associated with it. Um, for example, if index of a database table of users, um, each user would be represented in the index as a Lucene, separate Lucene document. Uh, each document consists one or more fields, and a field is simply a key value pair. Uh, what else uh, could be searched for uh, together or individually, the fields, I mean? And um, the other core components are the analyzer. Analyzers. Uh, are used for processing text during indexing and searching. Uh, in Lucene, we have three analyzers, standard analyzer, which is based on a basic grammar. It removes uh, connecting words like a, n, and, and etc. Uh, and it also converts uh, the words to lower cases. A simple analyzer is the next one. It also converts the words to lower cases, but it breaks the text based on no letter characters. And the last one is white space analyzer, which uh, breaks the text on uh, based on white spaces. All three analyzers are triggered in a sequence by using interceptors. Everything is happening uh, under the hood. Uh, without our uh, interaction. The next thing is the searching itself. In order to provide searches, we need to, to have uh, already created index, built index. 
Uh, in order to trigger our search, we need to execute a Lucene query. And for uh, the query itself, we're using an index search for uh, search through the index. The queries uh, itself are uh, easy to write. You'll see in a while. Uh, the syntax is really simple and the queries provide uh, us with uh, really um, agile and dynamic ways to, to um, create them. Uh, the queries support various types of queries. I will cover all of them uh, later in the presentation. Some of them are the face queries, uh, wildcard queries, fuzzy queries, etc. But before that, let's try to, to compare Lucene with SOAR, which is um, other uh, Apache project. For uh, example, Lucene is a library-based solution in, uh, used to index and store the search uh, and search the data till SOAR is standalone and a bit more advanced. Um, SOAR is built around Lucene capabilities. And if we need to talk about the relationship between both, it could be like uh, the relationship between car and its engine. For example, SOAR is the car and Lucene is the engine of the car. Uh, when we should use uh, Lucene or SOAR, if you are a search engineer, a programmer, or you want full control almost uh, all of the searches um, or your requirements demand you to, to do all diff different kinds of sorts and uh, customization around Lucene. So you definitely need to use Lucene itself as a library. Uh, if nothing of those that I mentioned doesn't make sense to you, so definitely you need to use SOAR you want something uh, that is ready to use out of the box. In that case, uh, this means uh, even without no, uh, any knowledge uh, of Java. So in that case, you, you can use SOAR. Um, if we, we can compare Lucene, a search engine with uh, other technology, which is uh, commonly used in our days, this is Elasticsearch. The relationship is almost the same. Elasticsearch is built on top of Lucene. Um, as you know, Elasticsearch is this distributed system which contains nodes and each node is um, built from one or more indexes. And those indexes are divided into shards. Actually the shards are Lucene indexes. How we can uh, integrate Lucene in our Spring Boot uh, application? It's really simple and easy to achieve by using Hibernate Search. Uh, this library combines the power of Lucene with the simplicity of Hibernate and JPA. Um, Hibernate Search also provides an elastic search integration, but today we'll focus on Lucene. Um, each time an entity is inserted, updated or removed in or from to the database, Hibernate Search keeps track on uh, all these events and schedule uh, automatically index update. All the updates are handled without you to having to interact with Apache Lucene IP directly. And to be more efficient, Hibernate Search batches the, the right interactions with the Lucene index. Um, for the demo today, I prepared a really simple uh, Spring Boot application with a Postgre database. Let me try to show you the database. It's a library uh, project. My root entity are the books and each book could have multiple authors. You can see many to many relationship. Uh, each book could have multiple tags. Again, many to many relationship, multiple genres, and only one publisher. The Spring Boot application itself, you can see it's really simple. I'm using uh, JPA repositories, uh, standard entities, 
here is the book entity, each entity, as we saw into the database as well, consists book title, ISBN, publish date, total pages, and so on. Here are the columns, the relationship, as you can see, many to one with the publisher, many to many with the other entities. For example, the tax, again, really simple ID, tag name, not that complicated. So let's move forward. Uh, Hibernate search is enabled out of the box when detected on the class path by Hibernate core. Because of that, uh, actually no configuration properties are required to get started. Despite that, we still can modify the configuration. And here I listed some of the most useful configuration properties. None of them, as I mentioned, are required, but you can customize your uh, configuration for Hibernate Search and your solution. You will never interact with the Lucene index writing process. You only have to declare how each entity needs to be transformed. Uh, in a second, I will show you the, the properties that I use in my uh, project. But before that, speaking about indexes, uh, here are some of the best practices that we should follow. Uh, the, on the first place, the way you index your data will determine how you can query it. Only index properties can be uh, searchable and only index the bare minimum you need for your queries. A smaller the index, the faster uh, the response will be. Okay, and how we're building our indexes. The code is showing you how to trigger Lucene to build the index initially during the startup of your application. After this initial build, Hibernate Search will take care of keeping the index up to date. Every entity persisted, updated, or removed. Uh, after executing the code, we should be able to see Lucene index under the folder that I set in my properties. Uh, let me try to show you the code itself. Okay, so starting with the properties, here you can see I'm using only two of the properties for Hibernate Search. The first one I'm telling to, to Hibernate Search that I will be using my file system for saving the indexes. And here I'm setting the exact path where the index will be stored. Uh, as you can see, it will be under the project, under data folder, under Lucene folder. Here, data, Lucene, and you can see my root model, the books with all of the indexes. Here is how we're, how I'm st you, um, starting um, the indexing process during the startup of my application, creating a full text entity. Of course, I added some loggers in order to, to, we to be able to, to see what's happening and using create indexer function and start and wait the index to be created. In order to be triggered during the startup of my application, I'm uh, using, uh, in, injecting the following class into application runner. Let me try to start the application to see, uh, to show you what's happening during the startup. In my database, I have 27 books at the moment. So here you can see everything that Hibernate is triggering the indexing. We have re-indexed 27 entities, the number of the books that I have in my database. And here you, we can see that it was really quick, the, the building of the indexes. Uh, moving forward, the next step that we need to, to do is to index entities. Uh, we just need to annotate the entities and their fields with a couple of annotations. I will show you some of the most used annotations. All entities annotated with index annotation will be 
not annotated with index annotation will be ignored um, by the indexing process. Uh, if we mark the entity with index, this means that uh, we, we will have a document created for each record for our entity and we'll be, uh, we'll be able to, to use, to search for this uh, entity. By default, um, it used the fully qualified class uh, as a name for uh, index name, but we could specify it as well uh, by using the index attribute. The next annotation is the field annotation. It should be applied to all of the fields that we wish to, to be searchable. And uh, there also those fields will be used for sorting or for projection. The field annotation itself contains four attributes that we can uh, use in order to customize uh, the property, uh, the name, attribute described under which name the property should be stored in the Lucene document. The default value is the property name following uh, the Java Beans convention. The store attribute describe whether or not the property is stored in the Lucene index. You can uh, use as a value store.yes, but have in mind that it consume more space in the index but allowing uh, the field to be used for projection. To store in a compressed way the, the values, we can use store.compress. This uh, does consume more CPU, but does not consume more uh, space. And to, to avoid any storage, we can use store.no. This is the default value. Uh, when a property is stored, you can retrieve its original value from the Lucene document. Storing the property has no impact on whether the value is searchable or not. The third attribute is analyze. Uh, each, uh, uh, this determine, uh, determines uh, whether the property is analyzed or not. The default value for this is analyze.yes. The last one, index, describe whether the property is index or not. The different values are index.no. Uh, this means no indexing and the value cannot be found by a query. Index.yes, the element gets indexed and it's searchable. The default value is uh, set to yes. Um, index.no can be useful for cases where a property is not required to be searchable, but needed for projection. The last uh, annotation on the slide is uh, sortable field annotation. Uh, it should be used together with uh, field annotation. And it make a property sortable. This doesn't mean that you can, uh, you cannot use other fields for sorting. Uh, you can use them, but will be slower and cause a higher memory consumption. consumption. Other um, annotations. Um, the first one is companion, again, annotation to the field annotation. It's called numeric field. It can be uh, specified the same scope as uh, field annotation or document ID annotation. It can be specified for integer, wonk, Fold and double properties. At index time, the value will be indexed using a tree structure. When a property is indexed as numeric field, it enables efficient range queries and sorting. Uh, also, uh, give us uh, ways to orders of magnitude faster than doing the same query on standard field property. Index embedded annotation, associated objects as well as embedded objects can be indexed as part of the root entity index. This is uh, useful if you expect to search a given entity based on properties of the associated objects. Only uh, actual index fields annotated with uh, field annotation are added to the root entity index when embedded objects are in, in indexed. 
Uh, the embedded object identifiers are treated differently and need to be included explicitly. Um, when index embedded points to an entity, the association uh, has to be uh, bidirectional and the other side has to be annotated uh, as well. And for that case, we're using contain in annotation. If we're not using this annotation, Hibernate Search has no way to update the root index when the associated entity is updated. Give me a second to show you all of the things that we already covered. For example, in my book entity, first thing here, you can see I am using index annotation in order to specify that uh, Hibernate search should create documents and index of the records for the book. Um, here also I'm using sortable view in order to allow a quicker sorting for my uh, books. The sorting will be uh, based on index, uh, on uh, book ID. As I mentioned, it's possible to sort on the other fields as well, but will be slower and will require uh, more memory. The field annotation, I'm using it for some of the properties. For example, here, for the total number of the pages, I don't have such annotation. This means that I will not be able to search uh, for uh, the total number of the pages. The field uh, annotation, I listed some of the attributes. Here, the index. The analyzer, as you mentioned, the default value is yes, but I added it here in order to, to show that it's possible to be changed. Sorry. Like that. Uh, the store, at the moment, you can see I'm not storing it. Uh, for the other entities, because they're embedded entities for my books, I'm using index embedded, and this is the only annotation that I'm applying here. If we open one of them, you can see at the top, I'm not using index annotation like that. And the reason is because we already mentioned to Hibernate Search that they will be indexed, but as embedded to the book. In order to have Hibernate Search to be able to mark uh, which field will be searchable, uh, we can use the field annotation. It actually it's mandatory to apply it here. In order to have the bidirectional relationship and uh, Hibernate Search to be able to update the root entity, I'm applying the contained in annotation. Okay. Uh, next thing are the queries itself. To run query, uh, you need to invoke methods on the full text session, which is extending uh, Hibernate native session, or we can use full text entity manager, which is extending the JPA entity manager. You can use either one of them as you prefer. In my code, I'm using full text entity manager and from it, creating a query builder. Our next step is to create a Lucene query using uh, Hibernate query and wrapping it with it. And at the end, uh, we, we can execute the, the search by executing the query itself. Step one, three, and four, same for all query types. And talking about query types, um, as, a, as I promise you, I will cover all of them here. And after that, we'll show you how I can created those queries in my code. Uh, the first type is the keyword query. It's used to find a specific word in the index. In order to use it, we can use a keyword function, which specifies that we're looking for one specific word. 
The next uh, one is the fuzzy queries. Uh, we can define a limit of fuzziness and um, the fuzzy queries actually uh, should be uh, used together with the keyword queries. And after that, to add the fuzzy flag. Uh, the fuzzy queries uh, actually is a technique that uses search algorithms to find a string that match pattern approximately. Uh, and uh, the fuzziness is specifying how many characters we can uh, use for this pattern approximately. Uh, next type is the wildcard queries. Uh, it's used where only part of the word is no. And in the wildcard queries, we can use question mark to represent a single character or a star representing multiple characters. Uh, similar to the fuzzy queries, uh, it should be used together with keyword queries. And after that, to add the wildcard flag. Uh, standalone query type are the range queries. Uh, it's search, search for a value above, below, in between given boundaries. It can be applied to numbers, dates, timestamps, and strings. The last three query types are the face query. It search for exact or approximate sentence in a text. In order to use it, we can uh, we should use a phrase function in order to may, uh, to specify the query type, and after that use sentence function to specify uh, the, the query itself. Uh, we can use all queries, which actually is similar to uh, triggering a select star from a table. It could be combined with accept, and it's uh, always a good idea to use accept in such kind of queries. Uh, except actually exclude document matching uh, given predicate. Of course, as I mentioned, it's optional. And in order to create more complex queries, we can uh, combine them using um, um, uh, different aggregation operators. Uh, the aggregation operators are should, which uh, should con uh, telling you that you, the query should contain the matching element of the subquery. Must uh, is specifying that the query must contain the matching element of the subquery. Must not, the query must not contain the matching element of the subquery. Uh, it's uh, similar, the aggregations are similar to the Boolean ones that we are using on the database layer. Uh, should is similar to or, must is similar to and, and must not is similar to not. Let me try to show you all the queries. And after that, we'll show you the demo of the entire project. First, let me start with the controller. As you can see, it's really simple controller only for searching, and the magic is happening under the search service. Thus, in the search service itself, uh, as you can see, I'm using a full text entity manager, creating a query builder, specifying the root entity that I'm going to use. And after that, creating a Boolean, Boolean junction, this is a combined query. And based on that, uh, based on the input fields, here you can see all the input fields for the request, title, author, ISBN, et cetera. Uh, none of them are mandatory. So this is the reason why I'm checking, are they provided in the request or not? If none of them is provided, I'm creating a default query, which should return the latest ten book from the database. But this in a, uh, I will show you in a second. First, let's go from the top. If the title is provided, I'm creating a fuzzy query from the full text entity manager, um, getting the query builder, specifying as a mention uh, that the 
first we need a keyword type, and after that, what the fuzzy FWAC. With uh, edit distance of two, we can specify the, the fuzziness. In my case, it's only for the last two characters. After that, mentioning on which field we should search and providing the matching criteria. Similar queries uh, are used for the author first name and author last name. Only difference is the searchable criteria and the field name. Next query is the wildcard query. I'm uh, creating such query, sorry. I'm querying uh, such query for the ISBN because not of most of the people, uh, because not most of the people doesn't know the ISBN itself. So the creation of the query builder is absolutely same, but I'm adding the wildcard flag. And in the matching criteria, we could use as a mention question mark or star for representing one or multiple characters. I will show you that in a second using the ISBN request. Next thing is a query for a numeric field. On the numeric field is allowing me to use a range query. And you can see I'm specified, it's a standalone type as I mentioned. I'm checking for the same or above the provided um, rating. Of course, we can combine them. We can use uh, below or in between. As you can see, it's almost same Cre uh, creation of the queries, really simple, not that complicated. Um, next thing, creating a regular query, or uh, but without fuzziness. If we compare it with the fuzzy query, the difference is only specifying the fuzzy flag and the distance. Everything else is absolutely same. Uh, something that I mentioned to show you for combining the queries, I'm using different aggregations. For most of them, I'm using shoot, which uh, is not mandatory to be contained, as you know, but for the rating query, I'm using must aggregation. If we want to use must not, uh, the um, syntax is a bit different we can uh, create the most query and after that to add not work. Okay, uh, moving forward for the tax in my request, I'm providing a list with uh, strings. We c there is a different ways of implementing such queries. Uh, the one of them is to create a subquery for each separate tag. This is the way how I'm doing at the moment in order to show you both things. It's same query that we used before that, the fuzzy one. But if we set in our tags uh, analyzer, we can combine, we can get all the values and to concatenate them in a string. We can do it with uh, connection words, we can do it with uh, white spaces, really does matter. The analyzers itself, uh, analyzer itself will uh, split the words and will search for uh, each separate tag. And as I mentioned, the default query, if no uh, user input, the default query uh, will return the latest 10 books from the database. If for this query, I'm using all queries type, or also setting a sort 
to be sorted um, book ID in the sending order and it's possible to set uh, the max result to limit the result from the database in my case set to 10. Let me start the application and to show you the, the demo. Okay, let me start with the title. We can search only for one field. You can see it returning me all of the books which are in which title is containing hurry. In my database, I have seven. So we should have seven here, four, five, six, seven books. We could combine it with uh, different fields, or we can, as you, you saw, we can search for them standalone. Here, I'm searching for books with title Harry, but as you know, in my code, it's not mandatory. The title, I mean, I'm using should. So this means that uh, I will get all of the books with title Harry and rating above 4.8, including this number, or all of the books above uh, this rating. Let me try to execute. The books, uh, the response is sort uh, based on the hit rate. This means if we have books with title containing Hari and rating 4.8 or above will be returned first. And after that, those with only with rating. Here, book with Hari, the rating, same. And you can see books without title, which is containing Hari and rating above 4.8. Okay, let me try to show you uh, the wildcard. If I execute search like that, nothing will happen because the, uh, the ice band is not full, but if we add a star, you see that I'm getting the response. With the star, I can change how many I want characters. I will still get responses for all books starting with 97. I can use a question mark, which is representing only the last digit, sorry. Let me check the number. Like that. And I'm getting the response. Only for the last digit. Similar to, to tax. The hit rate is also uh, in, in use here. At the beginning, I'm um, getting, at the top, I'm getting the books with highest hit rate. In our case, both tax. And at the bottom, I'm getting books with lower hit rate only for one tuck. Actually, that was pretty much everything from my side. If you have any questions. Yeah, thank you, Kalyan. Uh, guys, if you have some question, please uh, unmute and ask. 